I, I feel like this has kind of been a little bit everywhere. Um, Ilya Sova. I, let's yeah, Ilya what, Sova. What let's let's dig Ilya deeper Sova. into that. Um, so my thoughts, I, I'll like my thoughts when I first heard the signing was like strong bench addition. He can come off the bench, grab a few rebounds, hit a few threes, and and he's another veteran that um, I don't think he's had like I don't I don't know how many times he's made it like deep runs in the playoffs. Obviously, he's been playing with the Bucks for a few seasons before this, so he's had experience there. So I think he'll be a good locker room guy because he's been in the league a while. And they're going to look to him to just kind of be the stand in the corner, hit a few threes, and then on defense, just make sure you get the defensive rebounds when you're in kind of guy. And and that's that's a really important role, especially when it comes to playoffs, because you don't want to have to have your stars having to do all the scoring and have your stars get all the rebounds. And so having someone else who can do that uh, a little bit when they come off the bench is huge. Yeah. One thing that I was hearing, um, I believe I heard James Hansen specifically talk about this and it makes a lot of sense is he, um, doesn't shoot the three nearly as well as, um, Bojan, but he's still like his career three point percentage is just over 36%, which is respectable. Yeah. Yeah, Like if you're standing in the corner, you have to watch for that. So like the other team can't just leave him there. So he allows you to bring that spacing and he brings you a lot more, um, defense than Bojan, than Bojan brings. So while you're still obviously going to start Bojan and hopefully get him hot, and if he's hot, he's going to be playing and he can help put the game away early with his offense. But down the stretch, you have enough offense um, with Gobert, Conley, um, Mitchell, um, with those three on the court, that if you want to put Royce O'Neal and um, Ilya Silva in to play some defense that you can um, have a bit more lockdown D towards the end of the game. Bojan has been exposed this year, to say the least. And frankly, he's still not nearly as productive as he was last year. There's still part of me that's just concerned that that's because Conley's doing better. He's not getting the ball as much, but I'm hoping I'm wrong on that. So this really allows you to, if he's able to get into the offense um, and like be on the team, that he could honestly come down in close games playing the last three to four minutes to just help lock down the other team, which Mm -hmm. would be really exciting and and would be a piece that would help the Jazz a lot, I feel like. And one thing that having Ilya Sova on the roster, it opens up an opportunity for the Jazz to kind of test out, is they can can now try a five-out offense where you have Ilya Sova playing a stretch five, Bojan playing a stretch four, and then you have, uh, I don't know who you want, Mitchell, Conley, and Clarkson, or or O'Neal, or whoever you want to put out there. And then yeah. everyone can shoot threes. And and so then that will really space out the floor, and you get a couple cutters, and you might get some easier buckets in the paint that way. So I I, I don't know if that will be an like super successful for the Jazz, but I want to see them test it out, because that could be something really cool if you play that five minutes a game. Yeah, that would be really cool. I think, I think it's, I think that's an interesting thought. I don't think I could see coach Quinn ever doing it. Um, I just feel like there's too much of an investment in Rudy Gobert and in Derek favors this season, um, for it to, for them to do it. And with that lineup, I just don't know how the jazz would play defense. Yeah, you. I, I get you, the. You'd offense. lose your post presence a ton on the defensive yeah. end. Yeah, but Gobert is the reason the Jazz are the number two defense, and Derek Favors. While statistically, I think there's, they're not as good as you thought they um they'd be this year percentile wise with him in there. Like being able to play the drop big, which is what the whole league plays basically, um, just just allows that level of consistency with the players. So I'm just not sure what defense I'd want to see them play. The only reason, like, if they were playing the small ball Rockets of last year, which um, just kind of hurt Gobert at some times, I could maybe see that happening. So I could see them doing this in response to what another team does, but I wouldn't see the Jazz um, going out and 
and being the one who instigates the small ball lineup. Yeah. And if it does happen, it's probably going to be a, you need to get Gobert to rest a little bit more this game. You're already up by 20. Let's just throw it out there and see what happens kind of thing. And yeah. if, if it happens, I would doubt you'd ever see it in a playoff game. Yeah, I mean, no. Uh, after the Houston Rockets series, I, I wonder how much innovation we're ever going to see in a playoff series from the Jazz. Um, I mean, that series, even though that it was a gentleman sweep, like Donovan shots fall, a couple of shots from Donovan va- fall, and then you're in game six, you know. Um, if you don't have the performances you had in games one and two, then, you know, the Jazz could win that series. And a lot of that was due to trying to guard Harden in a new way that worked towards the end. But I think you're going to see a lot more. Let's stick with what we've done, which is part of the reason why they tried the zone last night is to, you know, see if they can get it going, see if they can practice that in the second season, in the second half of the season, and possibly use it in the playoffs instead of trying to implement it in the playoffs and then doing what they did last night and just not, not playing it well at all. Mm Mm-hmm. 